Right. Overcoming challenges. Well, I had a bit of a challenge, which was drinking too much wine last night and not getting enough sleep. So, um, <laughs> but I'm actually here to talk about um, some other challenges that were briefly mentioned uh, in session four yesterday, um, which is around reducing harvesting impacts on steep land forests. Uh, Forest Growers Research is managing several harvesting projects in its 2019 work program that are funded by the Forest Grower Levy Trust. Outside the FGR program in forestry automation, which is co-funded by MPI, so um, just like to acknowledge that that funding. And um, this presentation will cover uh, a couple of those harvesting projects. So. Um, there's no doubt, I guess, that our performance in environmental management of harvesting operations needs to improve. Harvesting residues are generally not efficiently used. We're under attack for damage to neighbouring properties, um, as you see in the right-hand photograph there, um, from debris flows, and soil disturbance and sedimentation of waterways still occurs from our road and landing um, operations. So I guess the question is how can we reduce the impact our harvesting operations are having on the environment? And um, I guess there's no real silver bullet to this, to this question, but um, we, we need to be working on a number of, a number of solutions. Um, in August last year, uh, FGR uh, hosted a workshop on forest management practices on steep erodible land, and at that workshop there was universal agreement that the highest priority um, was to keep woody debris out of, out of streams. And uh, several near-term actions were identified at that workshop, and um, one was to investigate ways to reduce tree breakage during harvesting to stop uh, accumulation of that, that debris. And um, the second one was to investigate better ways to extract slash and log residues to safe lo locations to reduce um, the, the chance or the risk of, of debris flows. So basically we put a bit of a team together, um, as you see here, and uh, came up with uh, two collaborative projects between forestry companies, contractors, and machinery suppliers and engineering developers to, um, and FGR to try and um, uh, look at this, these two uh, issues. So the first one, felling techniques to reduce tree breakage. Um, that was really the first priority for action. Um, if, if we can look at the felling techniques to reduce that accumulation of harvesting debris in the first place, um, and this is not, much, not about, it's not much we can do about wind throw and, and maybe branch fall or that material that's on the forest floor anyway, but um, it's really focused at, at what happens at harvesting time. So the project investigated alternative felling heads, um, and that was by comparing a fixed head uh, feller buncher um, versus uh, the conventional um, dangle type harvester head or feller director. So we found a cooperating contractor with um, Nathan Taylor and Hamish Matthews at uh, Mechanised Cable Harvesting in, in Nelson, and, uh, and they work for Tasman Pine Forest Limited and Nelson Forests Limited in Nelson, and we commenced a field trial of, um, of the Timber Pro fixed uh, head feller buncher and compared that with the John Deere 909, which is quite a common um, feller buncher self-leveller with a SATCO feller director. And the, the, the objective here was to just to determine the difference in breakage between um, felling trees with the two types of machines on moderate to steep slopes. So this is a, a shot of the Timber Pro 765 um, with the fixed uh, KF800 fixed felling head. And um, really the, the, the difference here is that it, um, the fixed head gives greater control over the felling direction and the rate of, of tree fall, as opposed to the, the dangle head that basically just drops the tree and, and lets, it, lets it fall. Uh, the way that we collected the data was using the sticks database from the processor head up on the landing. So it was a, somewhat of a different uh, type of um, data collection, uh, rather than looking at, at what was happening down the slope and, and trying to uh, calculate breakage at felling. 
and then of course you have subsequent breakage of um, tree stems when they're being extracted. So being able to, to uh, collect the data um, that was going through the process ahead through that, uh, that wood flow management system enabled us to make that comparison of stem length. And uh, what you see here is um, in the orange is the, the, uh, the, the trees felled with the fixed head and in the blue um, are the trees felled by the dangle head harvester. And, um, and as you can see there, results showed that much longer stems um, were felled by the, the fixed head and, um, and the average there was about 22.5 metres compared to the stems felled by the dangle head at about 16.1. So that confirmed that more of the total tree length was being recovered and processed um, up on the landing. The other comparison we did was looking at the uh, small end diameter of the stems that were felled. And again, uh, the dangle head harvester data is in the blue, the blue bars, versus the trees felled by the fixed head harvester in the uh, orange, kind of orange. The, um, the results really showed a, a larger proportion of stems with smaller diameter um, felled by the fixed head. And uh, the fixed head um, stems were, were averaging down to 16 centimetre top diameters. And, um, and uh, over 25% of the stems felled, and, and this was a sample of about 800 stems, um, had top diameters right down to the merchantable limit of, of 10 centimetres or below. So that was effectively indicating no breakage at all and maximising the value recovery of the whole stem, um, uh, you know, up onto the landing and um, into, into uh, merchantable logs. As opposed to the stems that were felled by the dangle head, uh, they had an average SED of 22 centimetres and less than 10% of the stems were down to that 10 centimetre minimum. So I guess in summary, fixed head feller bunches result in the relative break height of about between 87 and 92% of the mean tree height of the, of the stand. And uh, it, just in comparison with other studies of mechanised felling, um, they've ranged between about 70 and 86%. So there's a significant um, increase in that relative break height. The average merchantable uh, stem length of trees felled by the fixed head was about 40% longer and had 27% smaller average SED than the stems felled with the, the dangle head. Showing that current techniques of, um, of mechanised felling can be improved um, to reduce breakage during felling and contributing to less slash on the cutover. So moving into the second study, um, the second priority from the 2018 workshop was to look at improving extraction of residues from those high risk steep forests and, and adjacent waterways. The conventional way, I guess, of trying to, is try, trying to clear the stream using either using the hauler, which is designed to pull logs uh, rather than slash, or to put workers down into the stream with waders and chainsaws and cutting material up and, and manually um, throwing it out of the stream, which is hard work, it's hazardous, and, and effective, not very effective, really. It can't be shifted very far because of the weight of the material and, and it, it certainly doesn't go above what I call the high water mark of the, of the next storm. So it's really just going to be washed wash back down into the, into the stream. So this project was aimed at designing and building a purpose-built slash grapple for extracting slash with a helicopter. And the collaborators on this project were Hallihawk Limited, Pia Folsom Limited and Wire Wrapper Helicopters from Masterton. So we started off at the design stage and uh, Hallihawk did the design and that was completed in February. And it's effectively a multi-tine, lightweight, hydraulically operated grapple that's slung um, below the helicopter. We, um, we then went to the build phase and uh, the, the um, collaborator here was Colchester Engineering based in Matamata and they, uh, they built the slash grapple and that was completed at the end of March. And then we did a bit of a field test uh, with one of the um, woodlot operators, um, Turkington uh, Limited in, uh, in the sort of Wanganui area, and that had its first test in, in April of this year. 
And then uh, the next stage was production trials. So um, we worked with, with Pia Folson um, in a steep radiator pine forest um, in, the, in Kanuka Forest, uh, just outside of Gisborne. And, uh, and these production trials uh, occurred back in May. And the helicopter contractor, um, as I said, was wire wrapper helicopters. And, um, and the pilot, Tim Williams, was a very experienced helicopter pilot. So he was able to get the, uh, get the grapple down into those steep and sized gullies and, uh, and extract the slash. So I just got a few couple of results just to show here of the production trials. Results of the analysis of the time study showed a big difference between old slash and logs and, and fresh slash only. So more time was spent loading the grapple when, when we were trying to extract old logs and slash so one of the learnings was that it was recommended that as much log material as possible was extracted before you try to extract the slash. There's a lot of numbers on this chart, but I'm really only going to con uh, concentrate on the, the bottom uh, two lines there. The time study data was linked to a net helicopter payload using a, an onboard load cell to calculate the productivity of the amount of slash, tons of slash that were shifted over time. And the results showed that the net extraction productivity with the old logs and slash was about 16 tonnes an hour, but when we're extracting fresh slash only, it rose to about 18 and a half tonnes per productive flying hour. So in those conditions, the costs came out at about $154 a tonne of, of slash removed when extracting the old logs and slash, and that dropped down to $135 a tonne when extracting the fresh slash only. So converting that through to um, a cost per metre of stream um, length, in the best conditions of fresh slash only, this related to about $112 uh, a metre of stream length. Now if you want to com convert that again through to uh, the amount of uh, cost in dollars per cubic metre of wood produced, um, over the whole area of the, the harvesting block, when the cost of cleaning the stream using the helicopter slash grapple was averaged over the volume of wood extracted from the whole harvest area, the net cost came out at $1.05 per cubic metre of wood produced. So the conclusions from this study were that using manual workers to remove harvest residues from steep or incised gullies is recognised readily as a dangerous task, so we don't really want to be um, promoting that. Using machinery to where, where machinery access is available is, is effective, but often results in soil disturbance and further sedimentation of the waterways. So again, that's not really a preferable uh, method. This initial trial showed that the helicopter slash grapple that was um, designed, built and trialled by Helihawk Limited was well matched to the task uh, required of shifting slash, and um, the use of the Hallihawk slash grapple minimised the risk of negative environmental impacts, but it does have a high operating cost, which really limits its use to only the most high risk or most sensitive areas only. So what are the next steps? Um, that cost of, uh, of, of the, uh, the helicopter slash grapple started us thinking about the option to build a hauler slash grapple that would readily be able to be um, switched between the log grapple on a hauler um, and, and, a, and a slash grapple. It could be um, operated with a um, mechanical grapple or a grapple carriage or a motorised drop line carriage. So um, the next steps from that, uh, we want to do a bit of a field demo of the helicopter operation, and that's, um, that's happening next week, weather permitting. And uh, talk, to, talk to me later if you want to um, come along to that. I can send you the registration form. And, um, and the next uh, option is, is investigating this idea of a slash grapple for use on a hauler. So really, in, in summary, um, I guess the, the idea is that uh, that slash grapple on a hauler would um, just be attached and detached quickly, and so we sort of started to look at possible designs, um, but uh, we haven't gone that far in the, in the project. Um, but really, at this stage, that's, um, that's about as far as we've gone. 
Um, everybody's welcome to come along to the to the demo next week. It's in, in Gisborne. And um, if you want a little bit more detail about both these studies, uh, I've put a couple of reports out at the registration desk. So um, that's, um, that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you.